Okay, hello everyone. Hello. Welcome to another video. I don't have anything set up here, but I thought, let me do this quick shock build. Show you what that looks like. This is the ones that I've got, the CVA mini shocks. Uh, I've already done the front ones, just to practice a little bit, see how it goes. Uh, this will be the slightly stiffer ones. And then we'll be working to put the um, uh, softer ones on the back. And now, is everything Tamiya related? It comes into these trees. So let's just zoom in a little bit to show you that better. So everything comes into these trees. And uh, there's three options for setting up these things here. Uh, so you can see there's a couple of different versions that come in a kit. And for the front, I went with standard. And in the rear, I'm going to... I could go standard as well and then go softer springs. So I think I'll do the same. It is quite tricky actually to build this due to this step here. Uh, I've struggled this a whole lot. So let's see if I can do it here on a live stream. If I can't, then uh, <laughs> I'll probably have to cut it short and uh, see how that works out. But for now, let's get started. So I already have pieces here. Well, let's just get this cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we'll be starting with this shock uh, head here. So with one of these, and then we'll need to have two of these as well. And um, yeah, let's get the medium one, which is the two hole again. So that's just the standard, what they call it. So the medium one, that's the one we're gonna go with. And I always like to use the scissors to trim these off of the stand and then just fine trim them with your scissors. I've also had calipers for these somewhere or some kind of special special trimmers for those, but um, we don't have to use that now. So let's see if I can struggle with this a little bit with these pins, whatever they are. What are they called? Earring. Wow. Have you ever tried to put this earring on a shock? This is uh, this is something else. You need the patience of a saint to actually do it. So I'm just going to put the bottom one on first. I found that works better. So now we have the bottom one. You can see that it's there. Then on top of that, we'll put one of these items on. And then another earring on the top. And this is the tricky one. I don't remember how I did it. Oh, I do now actually. So I use this three millimeter tool here and then just gently push against it because it's quite wide it gives me enough pressure point but the first few times that i did it it did fly everywhere across the kitchen so let's hope this doesn't go flowing gosh that is hard so maybe just put it like this Hopefully you can see that. Maybe just put it like that. And sorry, let me just see this ring. I know you're going to struggle to see this. I don't know why I've decided this to be live video, but this is what we'll be racing tomorrow anyway. So I thought, let me let me work on this car a little bit, get it ready. Uh, so if we put it like that and then put this on top, oh, almost had it. But you know, it's just a game of patience. You just have to apply patience and just keep trying until eventually you are successful. So let's see. I see they use the pliers, but... I almost had it. That's almost there. Have a look. Oh, no. It's just gone somewhere. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I guess I didn't almost have it. So let's just struggle a little bit more. Should have called it struggle stream. I think that would have been more appropriate. Struggle stream. Uh, that's, that's what I could have been called. Struggle stream. Gosh. I always find a great topic to, to stream on. 
where I struggle. Like last time when I was doing live stream, I was doing soldering. So that was really fun as well. Watching me struggle with that. And now you're watching me struggle with pinions. I, I promise you guys, the, the RC racing is not all that bad. It's just, you just have to learn these things, figure out what works and, uh, and you'll be okay. I have my Tamiya pump as well. I was hoping that we'll be using this one today. So I had a lot of questions on that one, where did they get it, how it works, all of that. So let's just try and fit at least one shock together <laughs> and then I'll um, show you how that works. But there'll be a lot of trimming in this video. I can assure you that. Uh, one time I did fit this using the scissors. That's probably not a recommended method to use the scissors. But let's see if these Tamiya scissors are as good as everyone says. Okay, so let's keep spinning. So that's not good. Could I use these rusty old pliers, do you think? Are these rusty old pliers going to work? Let's have a look. Oh, they did work. Wow. Wow, first time lucky. So never let your rusty pliers out of your sight. Now. We have this tree. This is quite an important tree that we'll be working with. Wow, guys, I'm so pleased with that. Last time it took me like an hour just to finish one. So let's at least do one shock on this live stream. And then uh, we'll try and assemble the car later for another video, I guess. If we go down here, I'll spill some oil down here. So ignore that, but this is the bag that I'm using. And what I like to get out of it is this thing. And this thing, of course, only use it if you are an adult with your parents, but it's uh, one of these scalpel things that you have. So I'll just use it away from me to gently, gently, uh, let me just zoom you in trim uh trim one of these things here at the top so now that that's been trimmed uh we're all good to go so we can get started actually assembling this we'll close this just to be safe and now we'll get these rubber beads two of them we need well one of them is a shim actually so don't put shims in there just use these rubber rubber rings and it seems we got two spare ones as well in this kit, which is quite nice. Okay, so we'll use that. Hopefully the camera is good and you can see everything. Uh, yes, you can. So we'll just trim this with the scissors. This part doesn't really matter too much. You don't have to fine tune it all too well. So just get that done. Lovely. And now, 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 the important part, what you don't want to miss. Uh, with this kind of kit, you can build two type of shocks. One shock is this one, so the piston rod TTL1, TL01, uh, by using these extender pieces here. And then you have the off-road TL01B, uh, which is the uh, only with one shim. So now what we're going to do is get these shims cut, which they're on part of the tree we have. What number is that? Number seven and number three. I think it did, no, they did say V3 and V11. So we V3, fine. Where's 11? One, two, three. Okay, so let's get number three first. And then we'll worry where number 11 is. So we have that one. Aha, uh -huh, 11 here. Lovely. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, so it doesn't really matter the orientation that you've put them in, but let's just follow the manual since we're here. And then we'll assemble it. And then you just put it through. And that's pretty much that. You almost have the shock complete. Uh, now, same for the shorter shocks, we're going to use the shorter end, the shock end. And so we're just going to gently screw that on. I would recommend here 
having small pliers. There's also kind of RC pliers that you can use, but quite honestly, I'm just using these rusty pliers. Uh, I don't think they're gonna cause any damage or noticeable damage that's gonna impact the performance of this lovely chassis. So that's it, the shock's done now. Well, almost, but uh, let, let's go on to this. I think this could be quite exciting, actually. I've never done this on a video. I've done it in a short, and people were quite excited to do it, uh, to, to see it. So if I zoom that in and put some oil in there, just a little bit, let me see if I can show you that. Sorry, I keep bumping the chart. So you can see that's already gone down. We're just going to go gently up, gently down. And we're going to add some more oil. Let's try and fill it up as much as we can. And same here, we're going to go gently up and just let it soak in and gently down. So you can see how much the level has gone down now. So that's, uh, that, 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 that means that we have to, of course, top it up a little bit more. So we have more oil, so let's just keep going. And you can see those pistons that, that we've left open, one of these V9s that we've used. Uh, so V9, the middle part here. Uh, you can see that oil's going right through that all the way down. And just look at all those bubbles. They're coming off, so we're just gonna go gently up and down a couple of times. Not too fast, of course, because when you go too fast, you end up creating more bubbles into this or adding more air into the oil. So you actually just want to go as slow as you can. Here, quite often, I just fill it to the top. And then we have to use this one, which is just... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, there. So we'll just use this. And this is the pump. So the way this pump works, it can only push the air, well, pull the air out, but it doesn't pull any air in. So if I just zoom out slightly, you hold it there. You create the pressure in there. Once it gets really hard, just stop and maybe I can just keep it there and actually zoom in, zoom in. Uh, zoom in so hopefully you can see some of the bubbles in there I feel like this is letting the air out so maybe that button is playing up a little bit so let's just put it here where it's zoomed in quite a lot and then let's dump it up to create pressure in there You can see some of the, well, I can at least see the bubbles. Can you see the bubbles? You can see all of that white around the um, top. That's basically the bubbles coming out. So in an ideal world, we'll just let it stand there for five minutes or so. Let it pop all those bubbles. What I do to speed up this process, I just hold it, well, let the air go out gently like this. Uh, what's quite nice with this Tamiya one, and I had a Schumacher one before, that it controls how much air goes out, because when you can't control how much air goes out, the oil just goes everywhere. So that's a really... That's the mess you don't want to be cleaning. So we'll pump it one more time. There's still a few little bubbles in there, but nothing, nothing concerning, so... For the next step, we'll need this, some paper towel. So let's zoom out and set you up there. And there's bubbles going to the top. I don't know if you can see that. Because uh, if I angle it anymore, it will just trip out. But you can see some bubbles in there maybe now. But they'll all disappear. As we let the air out, they will all just pop. I can see them popping now, and the pressure is releasing, lovely. So for the next part, you just wrap your shock here, like this. You grab one of these caps, all the extra oil is just going to run down. I know some people say, like, well, before you fill out the shocks, make sure that this is, like, halfway in. 
But I create these like no rebound shocks this way, you see? So we'll just let the spring do its work uh, so we can control it that way. Uh, the spring that I will be using is one of these softer springs, uh, which comes in the color blue. So that's the one we'll be using. And for the next part of what we need here, we need to have one of these pieces, which is the piece number five. Cut that off. And we'll need to have everything else we have. So that's good. We'll see whether we need any kind of shock um, suspenders. So you can see, oh, okay. now we can drop it. It doesn't matter, nothing's gonna leak out. So you see, we'll just let the springs do its work. And these shocks are fairly short, you know, so we're not going to see a huge rebound of anything. The, the springs are quite soft, but we can see that it's returning it to the position, which is exactly what we want to have. Uh, of course, you have some inserts. You can see on the front here, I've added the inserts here to compress the spring a little bit to make it even stiffer. But, um, of course, tomorrow during the race, I have uh, two other thicknesses that I can use. So I can just play around with that, pull them in, pull them out. It's very easy. So you just pop them out like that. And then you have a... Um, a little bit softer shock. If you want it in, you just add it in, and uh, it's a little bit stiffer, as you can see. But let's see, that's the advice I've had then. For the Zem chassis car, you actually want to have the, um, uh, you want to have the, I'm just doing if I have any messages, but I guess no one's writing anything. So that's okay. Um, and um, yeah. To add it, we have these ball joints on the back, which you can see there. So we'll just try and pop it in. This can be a little bit painful at the time, but just pop it. And this back one out, bottom one, boom, done. Now we have the shocks. Of course, we're missing one on the other side, but uh, that shock does look pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, it gives a bit of color to the car, which we have now red here, blue there. Lovely. So, um, yeah, the next step would be to make another one for the other side. But I just hope I don't struggle with those. Uh, yeah, onto the sandbar and grab a battery here to connect. So... These are the batteries I'm using, the Gen Z EC4000. Switch the car on. Well, actually I should always switch the remote on first, but that's okay. So we can see that JX servo is working well, and here's the sound one. So much speed, guys, so much speed. Nice. So for sand one, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that, that could have been an accident right there. Uh, for sand one, because um, it's quite a simple car, you know, there, there's not too many settings. We'll keep the settings simple on the remote as well, because I don't want to confuse the car too much. The electronics are very simple. It's just plug and play, really. So all I want to do, because my servo is JX servo, uh, 6221MG, and it's like 25 kilograms, basically. So it's a little bit too much. Um, so what I did on that one, uh, reduced the forward rate. So as I'm turning, I've just reduced the forward rate to minus 40. That seems to have been working quite well for me. And then another setting that I've had, um, I've also added a little bit of an arc here. So let me just show you that, what it looks like. Uh, so yeah, so I was onto the speed, we have the speed, and then on top of the speed I also have the arc. So what the arc does is basically, before I get to 50%, we have 15% further reduced steering, you know? And that could really help us fine-tune some of this movement, especially where the front diff is not locked on this car. So what that means, if you lift it like this and have a look, so that, that wheel there, 
on my right on my left it's not spinning at all whereas this wheel is spinning quite a lot so with this not being locked uh, I don't want to I want to make a gentle movement in the turn because um, if the car is not biting on one side the diff will let go and then you lose all the speed so the 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 more precise I can be that with the steering the more speed hopefully I can carry out of that corner um, then if we look at everything else is pretty much normal I've not even done the end points uh, I've not even done the trim the car is pretty centered out of the box having adjusted this um, steering link here uh, quite a few times <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that and then um, let's see on the jewel rate if I was playing with that no jewel rate is 100% trim everything is on zero so I've not done too much really and I don't want to do too much I just want it to be a simple fun car that I can take out wherever I want um, so that's pretty much it um, for this video I think hopefully you've enjoyed it I'll probably trim the beginning and some of the parts of it and then uh, let the other members also see it in case they're working on the same build um, but yeah if you have any questions let me know in the comments and uh, thanks all for watching i'll see you soon take care now